the ABC 7 I team dug through the violations. Hospital records that seven on your side has taken a look at call that the result of a fall, but the family says the pictures tell a different story. After seven on your side started asking questions and social media spread the word, the VA reviewed Sergeant Hunter's evaluation. Seven on your side getting action after asking why this serious discipline isn't posted. Virginia's Department of Social Services said they're going to start adding it to this website. We're talking about a lot of missing money, hundreds of thousands. Can you tell us what happened to her or did you spend it? Instead, they're sitting in the driver's seat, glass falling down, many of them saved by covers like this one. Some of them offer ways to listen to voicemails and intercept calls on the sly. So you can essentially bug someone else's phone and listen in. 6,000 phone calls to poison control centers because of these pods. And you mentioned the confusion there. Look at them. For kids, they're squishy, they're brightly colored. After that escape, we wanted answers from the company paid by your tax dollars to guard prisoners. We ended up, though, with more questions after discovering two of the three men advertised as leaders of Allied Protection tell us they have no no actual ties to that company. As police officers combed Fairfax last Tuesday for a missing prisoner escaped from government contracted guards, we went searching for answers about the company that employs them. So I received a phone call from somebody from your station uh, asking me about it. 2,000 miles away in California, reached by FaceTime, Kevin LaChapelle was surprised to hear from the seven on your side I team. First, I thought it was a wrong number, and then when she began uh, sharing with me what the biography said, I knew that that was me. We captured images of La Chapelle's full biography on the website for Allied Protection Services, calling him the director of education and training for the company contracted by the U.S. Marshals. There's even an email address. The only problem is La Chapelle says he's never worked there. Never received any compensation from them, never been employed by them, never contracted, nothing whatsoever. La Chapelle had no idea Allied Protection had apparently been trading on his good name for years. And he's not the only one. Ronald Pascal, listed on Allied's website as the director of operations, also tells Seven on Your Side he's got no ties to the company. After both say they threatened legal action last week and demanded their information be removed, Allied's website, which had been up since 2006, disappeared. I wanted to send letters to any government agency that they may be providing work for, making sure that they know that this is incorrect information. The Seven on Your Side I team found two contracts for more than $2 million were awarded to the company last year by the U.S. Marshals Service, including one that put their guards in charge at Inova Fairfax Hospital. My concern is hoping that whatever agency is overseeing them uh, gives a closer look to find out and make sure that things are being done properly because uh, it is very troubling. And I just talked with the U.S. Marshals Service about 15 minutes ago asking about how they got that contract bid. The agency said its review before the contract was handed out showed Allied was a responsible contractor. Their rep cannot say at this moment whether what we've uncovered here will prompt another look at that contract and the bid. All right, so what does the, the president or the owner of this company have to say for the company and for himself in all this? Well, it took us a while to actually track him down. We tried three different email addresses for a solid week to reach him today. We finally got him on his cell phone. Leon Brooks mm -hmm. is the owner. He hung up on me, but first he did say that what we saw was just a test website, even though it's been online since 2006, and that any mistakes made were done without any malice. Some story. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're good job getting on that. Stay on it, okay? Thanks. Chelsea Sturman, nice work again. I was just shocked and horrified and very angry. For this Montgomery County mother, placing her two young daughters in someone else's care was an act of trust that was betrayed. They said that they would go to bed and wake up with him molesting them. This man, David Zariasi, was charged in the incidents, convicted of a third degree sex offense in 2013, served time and now takes up space on the sex offender registry. But two years ago, Zariasi was helping his wife run a daycare out of this home in Montgomery Village. It's very unjust. I think she should have been shut down immediately. But Elsa de Perea's daycare is now legally open for business without him. She did didn't want to comment, but after her husband was charged, records show Maryland's Office of Child Care briefly suspended De Perea's license and moved to revoke it, saying her failure to protect children in her care violated state code. That's something you'd never know without seven on your side. I thought that would be something that they would share with everybody. What do you think about the fact that they don't? I think it's horrible 
because they're putting other kids in jeopardy. But after the I team went through dozens of discipline files for daycares in Maryland and Virginia, we discovered that while routine inspection information is available on state daycare websites, suspensions, revocations, and serious discipline is kept secret on the web. This is an area that requires attention. Virginia State Senator Barbara Favola has been fighting to improve that state's child care regulations. Last session, she helped tighten the rules policing the people who care for children, but she says much work remains on regulating caretakers and transparency. I believe that parents should be made aware, and we have to have a system that does that. Both Maryland and Virginia blame confidentiality issues for not posting serious discipline online. I'm uncertain if the, providing that information to parents will be of assistance or hindrance. But in a confusing twist, Liz Kelly, director of Maryland's Office of Child Care, says parents can still find the information that's considered confidential on the web simply by calling the state. That seems odd to me. Does it seem odd to you? When you get into legal issues, sometimes it you know, perhaps doesn't make the most logical sense, but I can understand the reasoning behind it. And that's very shocking. That's very shocking. Stunning even to daycare providers like this one who didn't want to be identified. She says their businesses can be impacted by smaller violations posted online. So problems at a higher level should also be posted. It's scary looking for child care. That's their pride and joy and they want to know that they're taking their child, you know, somewhere to be safe. And if they're not posting these violations, then it could lead to more harm. Hi there. You're not in trouble, I promise. When the seven on your side I team comes knocking, people don't usually roll out the welcome mat. You're going to invite us in, you're very nice. But at Stevens' home in Frederick, Maryland, we didn't have to bust down the door to get close to everything he considers valuable. Neither do scammers, apparently. Because we're curious if your social security number is yeah, it is. We found Stephen's sensitive personal information. Is this all your information, your mother's maiden name, your social security number, your phone number? Same with this woman, Janice, in Laurel. We never knew how people got my information to begin with. But Seven on Your Side does. The I-Team uncovered the identities of thousands of people, even a handful of big names. Stars like Ashton Kutcher, a former U.S. Senator, Byron Dorgan, even Ferguson police officer, Darren Wilson. The I-Team found their social security numbers credit cards, even their PIN numbers. And it was all posted where anyone can find it, on a website called Pastebin. I didn't have to pay for this. I didn't have to search hard for it. How do you react here in that? It's scary. That's scary. 40 million that had their credit and debit cards compromised. We all know data breaches can happen. What we didn't know is hackers selling your information post bits and pieces of it in public to advertise they've got more for sale in bulk. It is a way to anonymously but publicly verify that you, the bad guy, have in fact stolen this set of data. Those free samples of information are all that a scammer needs to steal your identity. In December, Stephen's information was used to get Comcast service for this house 500 miles away in Michigan. I hope someday you get caught. But catching the people who steal your personal information is tough. It's illegal to post it, and sites like Pastebin will remove it when requested. But Jim Jones with George Mason University says shutting down the site does nothing more than set up a high-tech game of website whack-a-mole. That only solves a very small part of the problem. The data is probably elsewhere on Pastebin. It's probably on other sites around the Internet. Once it's out, it's probably not removable entirely. So all victims of identity theft can do is lock down their lives with credit freezes and monitoring. Even that, Janice discovered, may not stop them all. They give you a, a year's identity theft service, which mine is expired now. It's not enough. Um, no, it's not enough because they still find a way, as you see. We're shredding all the personal information we found and asking Pastebin to pull the posts. We contacted the website but have not heard back. Josie Sturman, ABC 7 News.